FM News Talk 97.1. On Demand Audio. Uh, if you're feeding a person a crap sandwich with a smile, it's still a crap sandwich. Glad you're back with us on the Mark Cox Show. Uh, still to come this hour, we are going to reveal our Twitter results are from our Twitter poll yesterday dealing with Harumba, the gorilla, who we haven't talked a whole lot about today. Uh, still a lot of people talking about what happened there in Cincinnati. Conflicting reports as to whether or not they're actually police are investigating the family or not. The family did the right thing today. Let's put it that way. We're going to talk about this more coming up uh, near the bottom of the hour. We'll get to Tony Colombo in here. Huge turnout, as a Donald would say. It was huge. A huge turnout on that Twitter poll asking whether or not the zoo people did the right thing. May still be time to vote. I don't know if Tony's uh, wrapped that thing up yet or not. Is it over? No. Okay, so go to at Tony Colombo 971, and you can find the Twitter poll there if you uh, still want to cast your vote before we get to that a little later in the show. The big story locally here in the front page of the Post today is the fact that there's a $1 million bail has now been set uh, for former uh, police officer Jason Shockley, who was accused of killing a man and planning a gun on him, Anthony Lamar Smith, back in 2011. This thing was investigated, investigated. The FBI looked at it. Shockley wasn't charged. Uh, he ended up uh, leaving the area and moving to Houston. And now four years later, they've charged him, uh, claiming there's some new evidence. And... They were holding him without bail, and his attorney went in and said, why? Is he flight risk? What's the deal here? I asked Jeff Roar to join us from the uh, St. Louis Police Officers Association. Jeff, how are you, sir? Great, Mark. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for giving us a couple minutes here. Uh, you guys are, as a group, uh, opposed, shocked. Give me your reaction to the fact that these charges came four years after the fact. Well, yeah, it's absurd, Mark. This is nothing more than a publicity stunt. Uh, by the current circuit attorney. Uh, you, you had a handful of Ferguson protesters joining the would-be cop killer's parents and demanding that, that Stockley be charged four and a half years later. And uh, two weeks later, the prosecutor is charging him. Uh, and we still, we still say there's no, ev no new evidence. And you should have heard that judge grill in the circuit attorney's office yesterday in court when, when they suggested that the reason that he's a flight risk or is a uh, threat to the community is because new evidence is, has uh, popped up. The judge said, I want to hear it. They wouldn't tell him. <laughs> he he was judge, I'd, I'd release him on his own recognizance. He was, he was kind of incredulous when they said, you mean you have new evidence and you won't share it with me? Right, right. And they refused to do it. I think he looked down to make sure he was wearing his robe. <laughs> So, so th they're, they're, the f he, he'd been held in, in uh, like solitary, right, to protect him? Right, right. Yeah, Which must have been miserable. So, it, it, they, they put him in a room where lights are on 24 hours a day, and they come poke you with a stick every 15 minutes to make sure you're alive, and, and no clothes. And you know, here's, a, here's a decorated war hero, uh, the combat veteran, uh, who, you know, like, like everyone else they sent over to Afghanistan, they, they, they put you through training to, to tell you how to survive if you're taken captive by the Taliban. And he said, this was worse. This, is, this solitary confinement experience was worse than, than, uh, than the, the Taliban training. So you know, I, I would assume that sometime in the past four years, if he was guilty and felt he needed to get away, he had plenty of opportunity to run. In this case, the new evidence that they claim to have has something to do with his DNA being on the gun. But didn't didn't Ch former Chief Isom claim they already knew that four years ago? Uh, they've had that information. Maybe they didn't crack the file on this until two weeks ago. But, oh, <laughs> uh, they've had that information for uh, four four years. Uh, the U.S. Attorney's Office also had that information, as did the Department of Justice, and nobody at that level has ever charged them. The Circuit Attorney's Office passed on their first opportunity to charge Stockley because uh, because that case was in front of them before Ferguson. And the difference here is not that there's new evidence. It's 
that we live in a new era, and in that new post-Ferguson era, uh, cops are are guilty till proven innocent. And uh, and whenever a politician can, and that's what our circuit attorney is, a politician, whenever a politician can make a splash like the Baltimore state's attorney did uh, and charge a cop, whether the charges are justified or not, it's it's political points. And I wonder about that because she's announced she's not running for re-election. I mean, are there higher political aspirations there that we don't know about? Well, she can certainly not count on our support <laughs> if she runs for something else. But uh, I, I don't know what I, I don't know. If, you know, I've called this a vanity prosecution. Uh, you know, maybe she's not running for anything else. But uh, this is certainly uh, this prosecution is is being moved forward uh, to to bolster her ego and to placate. A handful of folks uh, who who are going to keep the mound, demanding a pound of flesh, and you can't give them enough pounds of flesh to make them happy. Jeff Reuters, our guest from the St. Louis Police Officers Association, said the judge agreed to set a million dollar bail. The police officers association is going to help raise the amount needed. What is it? Ten percent? We've already posted it. Uh, okay. I know that there's people that are criticizing us for standing with our member, but I'm proud that we did. I'm not shrinking away from it. Uh, I, I, I personally took the check down there uh, because I'm standing with Stockley and I'm asking the entire community to stand with Stockley. Matter of fact, we're going to be putting up a, uh, a GoFundMe page or something similar shortly, and we'd ask your listeners to, to, to come to the slpoa.org website and, and look at the page we put up and, and, and do what they can to help this officer who's being wrongly accused. Well, I, I know that in the uh, Darren Wilson case, they they turned out in uh, large numbers on that GoFundMe page. So maybe we'll get that same support for Officer Stockley. Right. And I was behind that one, too, Mark. And okay. I'm, I'm proud to have supported Darren that way as well. Uh, Jeff Reuter, let me ask you this while I got you on the phone. Any reaction to uh, Chief Dodson's uh, blog post the last couple of days criticizing the courts uh, for uh, the, for not setting higher bails in cases where somebody's got a gun. I mean, I think this has been a problem for a long time. Well, I mean, the prosecutor's office certainly is intimidated and isn't timid about asking for high bails bonds when there's a cop uh, involved. A cop, by the way, who's been out of the street and out of the country and has presented no flight risk or 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 risk to the community. Um, but yeah, I mean, listen, it, it, we've we do our job. We deliver criminals to the courthouse steps, and uh, and something's going wrong after that. Um, you know, we while we have one of the highest murder rates in the nation, we also have a one of the highest clearance rates in the nation. We got one of the best homicide units in the country here in St. Louis, and uh, other cities are envious of of how many murders we clear. Uh, this is not known. This is not the norm for cities around the country to to clear as many homicides as we do. Um, so we're doing our job. We're delivering them to the, the courthouse steps. Um, I don't think the prosecutor's office has done its job under uh, the circuit attorney, and I, and I think there's some fantastic judges on the bench uh, here in St. Louis, but but there's others that, that need to understand that they've got a role in keeping the streets safe. Uh, that we that we live on. So so we know what uh, the mayor and what the police chief think is is part of the answer to trying to stop some of these carjackings and the recent violence we've seen downtown. What about from the officers' perspective, the guys on the street, the guys and gals? What do they think um, could be done? I mean, and you you can't you can't be there before a crime happens. I understand that, but what do they think needs to be done to try to cut down on these situations? Well, yeah, you, you're right. You can't be there before the crime happens, but but you can arrest the guy before the crime happens, and that's what they do. And so imagine how how incredibly um, uh, dis, disheartening it is when when you know that, you, hey, we just arrested this guy two days ago, and now he's doing a drive-by or he's doing a carjacking. Why is this guy out on the street? I mean, look at I mean, look at Vondrett Myers. Uh, you know, he should have never been out of the street. He'd be alive today if the courts had kept him behind bars where he belonged. Um, it, 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 this, you know, this is a common uh, phenomenon in this police department uh, to run into guys that, that we know ought to be off the street and that we've done our part in getting off the street. And here they are committing some serious crime that could have easily been averted 
uh, with a high bond or more aggressive prosecution. Is it a, how, how much of it is a, uh, in addition to that though? How much of it is a manpower issue? Or how, we're, are you... we're 117 officers short. Um, we got 117 vacancies, and we probably didn't have enough officers in the first place. We're probably uh, over 250 officers below where we ought to be for a city that's that's got this uh, crime problem. Um, so, I mean, that's part of it. But also remember, the, the the city has said, "Hey, unlimited overtime." You know, we, we're we're not spending the money on these 117 guys that that uh, these vacancies. So let's give that money back to the department to use for overtime. So uh, our guys have been working 50, 60, 70 hour weeks for the last two years. And, you know, it is a very fatigued, very battle weary department, but, um, you know, we, these guys have performed, uh, admirably, but beyond admirably, I mean, heroically, uh, in, in trying to, uh, put a tourniquet on, on this problem. And it, you know, it is, it's a, it's a big, big problem with crime that we yeah. have here. We're talking, some help. talking to Jeff Rorda. Are they trying to, I mean, do they have full classes at the Academy? They're trying to get you more help. No, we, uh, we've got two Academy classes in right now. One of them's got nine empty seats. The other one has got 21 empty seats. Um, the, they're not getting, and, I, and where the blame falls on this, uh, it, I don't know, but it's not the police chief. He's doing his best to fill these spots and, uh, the, the hiring, process under city control is uh is is lackluster compared to what it was under state control we didn't right. have this problem filling vacancies when we we're under state state control and we shouldn't have to wait for for six months for a list of eligible applicants um and and be shorthanded that entire time and then shorthanded for the six or seven months it takes to get them to the academy jeff Ward, i appreciate your time and you know i, was, I have to i'll have to admit just a little surprised to hear that this is all still fallout from what happened in Ferguson 18 months ago. Why we call it the Ferguson effect. Yep, that's exactly what it is. Yep. Hey, uh, we'll direct people to the slpoa.org where you can, if you're interested, uh, go on there and look for that GoFundMe page. Uh, for is it? It's Jason Stockley, right? The Stockley, officer who was yeah. charged uh, yep. by the prosecutor for that murder. Uh, yep. Jeff Rorta, thanks for your time. Thanks, Mark. Always Ab a pleasure. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Uh, I wanted to get Jeff on to talk about that because they think that the officer was wrongly accused in this case. Uh, the the, the post-dispatch hangs its uh, hat in that story on his alleged guilt because he was seen on some camera going back to his car to a duffel bag. He says he was getting dressing for the guy's wounds. They claim he was getting a gun to plant on the dead guy. So that's that's where the whole case hinges. But if it does go to trial, which it sounds like it will eventually, uh, it doesn't sound like a very strong case to me. You can help out at slpoa.org if that's something you feel compelled to do. Uh, much more to come here for you. 314-969-9797. The results of that uh, Twitter poll uh, coming up in just a couple of minutes. And should, you know, the military is now a social petri dish they already allow people to wear hijabs and head scarfs and all that stuff but private military academies don't have to and there's been a dust up over that now trying to force them to bend to this political correctness that story and more still ahead stick around